Hey guys, it's Eric here at Farpoint Farms. Today we're continuing our series on solar systems and solar backup systems. This is going to be, I think, part seven. It is all about those all-in-one portable solar generators that you see all over the place. I have promoted and reviewed a lot of those and on my channel, and for good reason. They're a great option for what they are. As long as you understand what they are, what their limitations are, they can be great. Um, what I want you to understand about these portable power packs is they come from all different sizes. We have ones all the way down to 150 watts, all the way up. I think the, the one that I'm most recently being sent is 240 volts, many kilowatt hours of battery storage. I mean, it, it, is, it is almost as good as a whole house system. So when you get into those, the things you need to be aware of is that they are not usually, if you're looking for the moderately priced ones like these here, they are not going to be a full-time replacement for anything in your house, although they can be used to run a refrigerator or CPAP or ham radio gear or, or radio gear in general. You can run a lot of things on them, but it's a single item solution. For instance, when the power goes out on our current system, solar keeps the refrigerator running, it keeps the lights going, and it runs two outlets in, uh, to keep this going a little radio setup that I have here in the, in the studio. But what it doesn't do is run everything all at the same time. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty small setup. And so there are things on the other side of the house away from where that power was that I still want to keep powered up. And so I use a little 600 watt unit and I power up my router. That works perfectly. The fiber optic lines coming into the house, they need a little bit of voltage. So we have a smaller unit, a 400 watt unit that we run over there. So those two units are perfect. They run those two items and they run hours and hours and hours without issue. Portable power units are perfect for that. What I would not recommend when it comes to portable power units is purchasing one and trying to scale an entire solar setup based around it. They're probably good in that sense if you want to run one out of a car camper or you know a van camper because of their compact nature. You can take something that you can pick up weighs maybe 35, 40 pounds, produces 800 watts of power out, has a charge controller built in so you can plug your solar into it. It's an all-in-one solution and it works great for car camping and van camping. When it comes to RV, yes, you can buy larger ones, 1500 watt, 2000 watt units, but there you want to look for something special. You want to look for something a little different because you are kind of limited to what's in them. So if it has X amount of battery capacity, you're kind of stuck with that. So what you want to look for if you're looking for one of these for an RV is something that can handle more solar inputs because some of them are limited to 200 watts. If I was going to run an RV, I'd want at least 400 watts of solar power coming in. So I would look for one that can handle four or even 600 watts coming in. And this is something that is showing up more and more on newer units, but may not be on the budget ones. The ability to add a second or third or fourth battery to it. Usually these batteries are basically the same size as the main unit. Here's some pictures of them. And they come with a specialty cable to hook between the two. So it's kind of a smart battery. With that, you could scale up a system. So if you bought something, realized you needed more reserve capacity for, you know, for overnights, running a fan all night or running a refrigerator all night or whatnot, you could always add a second battery where some of the lower end units, they don't offer you that. So if you were constantly finding yourself running out of battery juice at three o'clock in the morning, well, that means your entire investment was just a poor choice and that's not a great place to be. For whole house units, they are more and more they're offering these monstrous units that, in fact, the latest one I got, it offers 240 volts coming in. So it, it, is, it is capable of running a lot of stuff. But much like I said about the inverter charger combinations, the issue we run into when we buy something many thousands of dollars these larger units cost is that you're talking about having a system that now has the batteries integrated the charger integrated and the inverter integrated and if any one of those three things has an issue the entire unit is no longer functional and no longer worth anything that's a huge problem and a big risk i'm not sure it's one i would want to take however if you are um, not mechanically inclined if you're not really good at wiring if you're not really comfortable with the system it is the easiest way to go about getting a large functional system to keep your house powered up the only thing you need to add at that point is solar 
And if you're talking about a system that is, you know, 3,600 watts and has a 220 line or 240 line coming to it, well, then you definitely can probably plug in six to 1,600 watts of solar panels and keep it fairly well charged during the day. So it does have advantages in that sense. So overall, I love them for what they are. They are an emergency source of backup power. You buy a box like that for four or $500 in the 800 watt range, and then you add 200 watts of solar, and you have an endless supply of power to keep a refrigerator running in the event of a power down event, or a router, or whatever it is you need. That's the limitation of it. To get a whole house system, you're still talking about wiring in a, a massive array of you know four or five, six panels, 200 watt panels. You're looking at a lot of power coming in. And so if you're gonna go that route, it's probably better to go ahead and buy each system component separately. It's because the batteries for these things, even the ones that do have expandable batteries, you're gonna pay a, a premium for that battery as opposed to purchasing a regular uh, lithium battery from a company on Amazon or eBay or whatnot. I guess that'll do it. And the series here that I've been going through, we're almost done. Uh, the last part of this, part eight, is just wrapping things up and, and seeing if you have any questions for me. I've enjoyed this. I hope you have learned something about this. It took me four years of screw ups to figure all this stuff out. And I hope that I'm able to explain this in a way that uh, for the novices out there, you're able to kind of get, get a handle on it. Till next time, my friends, take care.